Greetings, and welcome to Worship with Weston United Methodist Church. My name is Nick Deitman, and I serve on the hospitality team. It is a joy to have you worship with us today. We invite you to fully participate. You will find worship materials in the description section of our live feed. As we prepare our hearts and minds to worship, we invite you to light a candle as a sign of Christ's presence with you today. May God be with you as we enter this holy time together. Greetings, my friends, and welcome to this time of worship together at West End United Methodist Church. We gather from many, many different places and are joined together in the spirit as one as we worship and pray and praise God together this day. So glad that you're with us this morning. I would invite you to register your attendance with us. There should be a link in the comment section alongside uh, in the live stream or Facebook Live where you can uh, click on that link and let us know that you and other members of your household are worshiping with us today. We also invite you to pay attention to those comment sections to greet one another and to look for other links that will help you participate fully in this time of worship. There will be links to the hymns, uh, to the creed, uh, opportunities to share prayer concerns, to give and learn about ways to serve. So uh, we hope that you will participate fully uh, from wherever you are this morning. I have a few other announcements to share with you as we gather today. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, which is the birthday of the church, and we wanted to find some way to celebrate that together and perhaps have an opportunity uh, to gather and spend a little time on our church campus together. So we are having a Pentecost parking lot party next Sunday from 1 to 3. Uh, we would invite you sometime during that time frame uh, to drive through the church. We'll have signs that show you which direction to go and uh, we'll all have to stay in our cars of course but uh, we'll have a path that you can drive through the parking lot uh, and we'll be there to wave at you and invite you to wear red or to wear your church t-shirt if you're a member at West End and uh, just have a moment of time to celebrate with each other here on the property. Rain or shine, we'll be there. 
Also, I um, wanted to let you know that Camp We, which is our uh, Vacation Bible School week, is still going to happen. It will happen virtually this year, uh, June 15th through 19th. There will be Bible stories and crafts and music, so be on the lookout for announcements and links about that. Uh, that will be going virtual this year. We continue to have lots of opportunities to serve. One of our partners in mission is Project Transformation, which is um, a series of summer camps for kids that help uh, them continue to grow in their education and learning how to read. And um, that also will not be happening as it usually does, but they will be in need of volunteers and supplies this summer. So there should be a link also next to this uh, video about supplies that you can donate or ways that you can volunteer for food distribution as we continue to support that important ministry in our community. And finally, I just want to say a word about the reopening of the church. Uh, President Trump made an announcement on Friday, um, a proclaiming houses of worship to be essential and uh, that has been a little confusing to folks as they've wondered does that mean we're all opening on Sunday Um, it means that we will continue to be prayerful and careful and thoughtful as we look at how we might reopen as a congregation we have a task force for reopening Uh, I'm writing my Monday meditation all about that tomorrow I have their names listed so you'll know who they are medical experts public health experts and of course our bishop 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 Bill McAlilly has asked all United Methodist churches to remain online at least through June 21st. So that's a helpful date for us to have as we prepare and pray uh, for what reopening might begin to look like. So we appreciate your prayers and just know that we are prayerful and careful as we hold as a priority the health and welfare of our congregation and our community. Let us now continue in a spirit of worship as we hear the story of Jesus' ascension and join his disciples in that moment.
sustainer has gone out before us. Even in the desert, God rains down provision for our needs. Beloved, cast all of your anxiety on God. God cares for me, for you, for all. God will restore, support, strengthen, and establish us. To God be the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us come now before God, who is ever present with us, who loves us, sustains us, and is able to bear all of our burdens. Loving God, we confess that this season has left us like the disciples at the ascension, staring up at the heavens, unsure if you are still present among us. Our own fears are compounded by the ache of humanity. There is so much need. We long for tangible evidence that you have not abandoned us or our world. We are overwhelmed and uncertain, desperate for reprieve, yet we hear your angel say, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? There is work to be done here. May we resist the temptation to look away from our reality. Instead, fill us with courage, fill us with compassion, so that we may meet Christ in the faces around us and find the comfort of his love in our neighbors. May we be renewed each day to bring about your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. As a forgiven and reconciled people, let us exchange signs of reconciliation and love. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. The peace peace of Christ Christ be be with you. you. The peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. for the Easter prayer for illumination. Resurrecting God, open our hearts to your holy word so that we may truly understand and understanding so that we may believe and believing that we may follow Jesus Christ in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Amen. The gospel reading today is from Acts chapter 1 verses 1 through 11. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over the course of 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait here for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, 
but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or the periods the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took them out of his sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Yeah. I'm going to invite all of the children who are out there to come a little bit closer to where you can see me. I'm imagining so many of your sweet faces, and I'm glad to be with you this morning for a special moment together. You may have, in the past few weeks, been out and about a little bit, maybe driving in your car. You've seen people walking around with masks on, like this. And it might be that at first, that looks a little scary. We think of masks sometimes as something we wear on Halloween or something we wear to hide our faces. But the masks that people are wearing out on the street right now are actually signs of love and care. You see, with the virus that's going around right now, if I wear a mask, it helps me from getting someone else sick. Maybe if I have the virus and I don't know it, it's good for me to wear a mask. And it's a way of saying to other people, I care about you, and I hope that you stay well and healthy. So next time you see someone walking around with a mask, I want you to know that that's a sign of love and care. I want to show you my special mask that someone in the church named Deb Smith made for me, and it's an extra sign of love and care. You see what it says? God loves everyone. I'm going to show the choir too. Unconditionally. So it's a sign of God's love for all people. And that's a wonderful thing to share with the world. Let's pray. Gracious God, it seems a little strange that wearing a mask can be an act of love. But in this moment, it is. It's a way to say to the world, I care about you. I want you to be healthy and safe. It's one thing we can do to take care of each other. So I thank you for all the wonderful people in our church and in our community and beyond who are sewing and working so hard to make masks for other people. We pray for all of those nurses and doctors and healthcare workers who wear these masks every day and who tend to the sick we pray for the sick, and we pray for healing, and we hope that you'll help us do everything we can to share your love with this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all so much. Well, I'm sure that during these days of quarantine, some of you have been exploring new television shows and movies and Netflix and Hulu and Disney Plus and whatever is your channel of choice. Well, I discovered the other day that Jerry Seinfeld has a new comedy hour out. I'm a big fan of Jerry Seinfeld. And so I sat and watched it and I realized it's just what I needed is some good stand-up comedy. Now, I don't know if any of you have seen it. Have you seen Jerry Seinfeld's new comedy hour? Well, first of all, it opens up and it just looks, oh, it just takes you back, you know, to that day when there's a theater full of people and they're sitting side by side and they're laughing together and they're in New York City and it just reminds me of so many things that we took for granted. We didn't even know were such a treasure to us. 
But he starts off his routine congratulating the audience for all that they went through to get there. You know, you went to the trouble to get tickets. You thought about the tickets five times today. Did you get the tickets? I got the tickets. Did you get the tickets? I got the tickets. And making arrangements for a ride and who's going to get there. Are we going to go to dinner first? Getting a babysitter, all of those things. And he said, okay, you're here. You have a night out. And already about half of you are thinking, I got to get back. He talks about it's human nature that we always want to be where we're not. We want, to, we want to know what's next. We want to be at the next thing. Like we want to get to the airport. When we get to the airport, we want to know well, when's the plane going to land? When, when's the gate going to open? We get in the airplane, we're wondering when's the plane going to land? When are they going to open the doors and let us out? We're always like, what's the next thing? I was telling my husband David about it. He's like, it's like going to church. We got to rush. We got to get to church. And about 10 minutes into the service, we're like, when is this going to be over? I, No, y'all don't do that, I'm sure. (laughs) Now you can just hit pause and take a break and come back. but, But that's part of our human nature. We have our minds so often more on what's next. We want to know the future so we can plan and prepare. We want to be able to predict with certainty what's coming next. And that is one thing among many, that is making this moment in our history so stressful for so many of us. We don't know how long we will have to social distance from one another. We don't know yet when the church will be able to open. We don't know when we can celebrate weddings and graduations. We don't know when we can go safely into public and, and not wear masks. We don't know if and when a vaccine will be developed. We don't know, we don't know, and there's so much uncertainty. And like you, I'm a bit of a planner, and I wanna know, is my son gonna be able to go to college in the fall? What's school gonna look like for my daughter? Many of you are wondering, am I gonna be able to go back to work? Is my job even gonna be there when all of this is behind us, if it ever is behind us? There's so much uncertainty about even the near future. And it's hard to stand in that place. But you know, we're in good company. Because this feeling that we have of uncertainty puts us right in the middle of this story this morning. Right there with the disciples on that hillside with Jesus. This is the moment when Jesus is about to ascend back into heaven. He has been raised from the dead, and as Luke tells us the story in both Luke and the book of Acts, Jesus spends 40 days showing himself as a resurrected Lord to his disciples and followers. He's been with them during these days, preparing them for the fact that he is leaving them. He is leaving life on earth as they have known it. They will no longer be able to see him physically. And he's been preparing them for that and promising that he will be with them always. And he tells them in this moment to stay in Jerusalem and wait because the Holy Spirit is coming. And next week, we're going to celebrate the arrival of that Holy Spirit that fills all of them with Christ's presence forever. But in this moment, they stand as Jesus is being raised into heaven, and they're not sure what that means. They have one last question for him. They ask, Lord, is this the moment when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? They're still thinking about their old plans. They've been thinking and hoping all along that that as Jesus is the Messiah, that he will restore the kingdom to Israel, that he would restore power to Israel, throw over the Roman government perhaps, or whatever that means for them, that this will be a triumph for the nation of Israel on earth. And they want to know, is is this the time? Is this going to happen? When will this happen? And Jesus says, it's not for you to know the times and the days. It's not for you to know that future plan. Is that an invitation for us too? 
is that perhaps an invitation for us to work on letting go of that wanting to know the future, wanting to predict, wanting to be certain, wanting to have a date, wanting to have that knowledge of how it's all going to unfold. Perhaps it is an invitation from Jesus as he ascends to try and let it go. There's much that we don't know and much that we don't have control over. But Jesus says to his disciples, I have a job for you. It's not for you to know the day and the time. It's not for you to predict the future. But you will be my witnesses. Your job in the meantime, in the here and now, the present moment, is to be my witnesses. What does it mean to be a witness? It means to open our eyes and to see. It means to tell what we see, to share our experiences. It means to point to the risen Christ in our world. It means to keep our eyes open for where God is at work here and now. And we know from the scriptures and from experience that the first place to look for God's work and God's presence is among the poor, the vulnerable, the sick, the oppressed, the lonely, and the lost. Are we paying attention to those people and those places in our community where we know Christ is abiding? And how do we see Christ at work in those places? Where do we see Christ at work in our own lives? And can we tell those stories? Can we share in that work that the risen Christ is doing right here, right now in our midst? Can we be witnesses? And I know some will say, I can't even leave my house. How can I be a witness? Well, I have seen the risen Christ at work all around in you, right in this moment. In the ways that you reach out and care for one another, all of the people in this congregation who have made phone calls to all the members of the church just checking on them and showing care, the way that you've written notes, the way that you've dropped off cookies and food for one another, for those in need, the way that you have been praying. I read an article this week by Dr. Craig Barnes. It was an article in the Christian Century talking about those monastic communities that gather and pray the hours. They pray for the world. They don't remove themselves for the world, from the world so that they don't have to be part of it. Their very life is prayer for the good of our world. We must never underestimate the power of prayer as a witness of Christ's love and compassion. So what are you praying for? How fervently are we praying in these days? As I shared with the children, wearing a mask in public is a witness saying to the world, I care about you, you are precious in God's sight, and I'm going to do what I can to promote your well-being. How do we bear witness to the community as we pray and prepare to reopen as a church? How can we be careful and prayerful and make sure that whatever way we do that is for the health and well-being of one another and for our community? I have seen you bear witness through your giving, through your sharing of food with Glencliff United Methodist Church and Project Transformation and all the ways that even now you are generous and compassionate. You are witnesses to the risen Christ in this world. I think it was last fall that our chancel choir sang that wonderful spiritual Who Will Be a Witness? Who will be a witness for my Lord? Who will be a witness for my Lord? And I love how the song ends. There's another witness. There's another
another witness. There's another witness. There's another witness for my Lord. May it be so, here and now. Amen. you rise in body or in spirit and join me in our affirmation of faith. This is the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, I invite you to lift up both your silent and spoken prayers. Um, you may list your prayers in the, in the comment section of the live stream if you would like, or you may also contact us via our website. There should be a link uh, to that in the comment section. Please remember that confidential prayer requests um, should be sent through the website and not on the comments. This morning we remember the family and friends of West End member Dr. Carol Ann Thornburg, who passed away on May 14th. A memorial service will be held at a later date. Prepare us now, O God, as we lift up both our silent and spoken prayers. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of good news, this morning we celebrate your active presence in our lives and in our world. You are on the move, O oh God, even when we cannot leave our homes. And you invite us to participate in your redeeming work in new and creative ways. We give you thanks for the example of Jesus Christ, who shared the good news even in the face of terrible and trying circumstances and especially on this Memorial Day weekend, we give you thanks for the sacrifices of so many who gave their lives in the pursuit of peace and freedom and the common good. Redeeming Savior, help us to see your world and your people with your vision. Make us mindful of our interconnectedness with all of creation and guide us to use our freedom for the benefit of others. Melt us, mold us, fill us and use us to witness to your love and grace in the world whenever and however you call us. O oh, sustaining spirit, there are many things on our hearts and minds this day. There are people who need your healing touch, those who need your gentle nudging, and yet others who need your transforming love. There are places all over our world that need your spirit of peace and justice to reign. And there are situations that need your wisdom and guiding hand. 
So in silence now, we lift those people, those places, and those situations up to you. Holy God, we know that you are ever ready to hear our prayers. And so, in confidence, we offer them to you in the name of Jesus the Christ, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to our time of offering, we invite you to give your tithes and offerings so that our congregation can continue our vital ministries in our community and throughout the world. You can give through our website or you can text to give. You can also mail a check to the church. We realize that many are suffering and finances might be tight right now. We encourage you to give as you are able. We know that God can multiply those gifts for the benefit of God's kingdom. So let us give with joy this morning.
Christ is the world's light. Go to be witnesses to that light. Or as our founder John Wesley said, do all the good you can, at all the times you can, in all the ways that you can, in all the places you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. Amen. Thank you.